Anyone got any that pizza? Mm -hmm. Anyone know the Lewis? Through that door? Well, that's in the reception <laughs> desk. That's the reception desk. And there's, there's the ladies and, and gents there. Um, that door, if you go out, are we keeping it propped open? Yeah, we'll keep it propped open. Okay, so you don't have to worry about coming back in if it'll be open. Um, I think that's fully yeah, it for housekeeping. I've had an apology from the technical about the aircon. Oh, yes, and we we'll apologise on behalf of the university um, that the air conditioning's not working. Um, but we have got fans um, and we can move that other fan up if we need to as well. So please, if you feel, if you feel faint um, or unwell, please do speak to her in the green t-shirt. Um, Drew in the, he's waving. <laughs> <laughs> or, or Scott, because I think you're still at his initiative first aid. Yeah. 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 Um, and we'll do our best to, to help you. Right, so if we're, okay. I'll get Okay. Tell me when we're, we're sorted. Okay. Well, welcome to Word at Pompey. And it's lovely to have so many of you here today and people who are watching on the live stream. Uh, this is the first time we've live streamed the event. And thank you to Leo Lindell, who you're going to be hearing from shortly, who's made that happen today as well. Um, Leo is the founder of Coffee Machine at SOTIC, a digital sports agency which delivers massive websites using WordPress. He's been a member of WordPress London since 2016, and he regularly live streams their meetups. He joined the communications team for WordCamp London this year, and was responsible for live streaming. So if you want to have a look at the live stream, you can check it out on YouTube at WordCamp London. He's also been working with myself and others, and we're producing documentation to help other word counts and meetups live stream. So if you're watching this in the room or on the live stream or on the playback and you have experience of live streaming or webcasting um, events, then let us know. Um, our details are going to be on the on the slides. Um, you can you can message us on at WP Pompey um, or myself at Nonstop News UK on Twitter or on the WordPress Slack or contact Leo as well. Tonight, Leo will be talking to us about migrating a WordPress business from self-owned hardware to the cloud, followed by a Q&A. So if we can keep questions to after his presentation, we'll be really grateful. He's also going to do a second half after our break on introduction to live streaming. So the company that um, Leo founded planned an 18-month migration from its own data center to AWS in 2015. Now, four years later, SOTIC is 100% cloud-based and runs some very fast, award-winning WordPress websites. So it's been an improvement for employee morale, employee well-being, and also work-life balance. And we're very glad and hope you'll join us in welcoming Leo Mindell um, to talk to us about how this firm did this and why we should consider it for our own companies. So a welcome to the Can we just do the um, sponsors? Did you do the sponsors? Yeah. Yeah. And before, as Leo gets ready his presentation, can we say a very big thank you to 34sp.com, um, who helped sponsor tonight, and also to Red IT. Now, both of them offer discounts for attendees, so if you want to talk to, to Scott, who's here with us tonight, or someone from 34SP, we can arrange that and they offer a really good and reasonable plan, so please do think about it. And just, if nothing else, just tweet about um, thanks to them sponsoring this event. We wouldn't be able to have this venue, refreshments, and the materials that we produce if it wasn't for our sponsors. So thank you to both of them. Over to you, Leah. Thank you, Alan. Do you ever, ever have a problem that you don't go to sleep? And it goes on for one day, two days, one week, two weeks, or a year or longer. That's the problem I used to have, and today I'm going to talk about it. I set up my agency 18 years ago, the company's name is Soting. 
we deliver sports websites for very high traffic, very high uh, big names that you would have heard of. 18 years ago, we <coughs> built websites. One website equals one server. Very straightforward. That was the way you did it. But then what would happen, along came a sale, season tickets, and the website will be down. So the website will be down. You know, it's that day that you need the website to work is the day that the website's down. So what did we do? We moved from a single server, single site to a single server, onto something called a cluster. We built our own cluster um, where we had all the services, all the sites were sitting there, and you were able to look, and they would work there. Unfortunately, the internet became very popular. So the traffic that we were working to got bigger and bigger and bigger. So we would expand our servers, we'd expand the size of our cluster, we'd expand how many devices we were having, and it would keep growing and growing and growing. And we'd be having more and more servers, more and more hassle, more and more problems. And that kept on going on. About four years ago, we decided we had enough of this. We don't want to own these servers. We want to see about moving to cloud. And so, we had a plan that was to move to cloud. And of course, like everything else, talked to all of them. We, we brought in an agency and they said, this is how you're going to do it. This is how it's going to work. It's going to be really straightforward. It's going to be 18 months. So we had this planned migration to cloud. And some of you will recognize this. It doesn't matter what the product is. It's always the same. You document your requirements, you choose who your team is, you do all the migration, you do everything, and of course you're going to deliver your target in exactly the 18 months they say you're going to do it. That's absolutely what's going to happen. That isn't what happened. <laughs> Didn't even look anything like it. The reality of that is that we actually started the process four years ago, as Alma mentioned, and loads and loads of things that you come across didn't happen in the time that you were expecting. Four years ago, the landscape that you looked at four years ago, we were talking about moving, we made the decision to move to AWS. A lot of you may be familiar with that company, that's Amazon's cloud system. Um, and it was like, you were, we we're gonna use this great new product. We weren't just going to move the servers, and lift and shift them, we were going to go to something that's called containerized uh, solution. And what that means is instead of having that, when I said at the beginning, we started with one server equals one website, you then move to a virtualization where you put lots and lots of sites onto, in, into a physical box, and containers are moving you one level above, so you're running just the Apache or, the, or, the, or that area, and you're able to run multiple copies of that. We actually did a lot of the work and it went really, really well. Um, but things <coughs> did take time. And the reality with all of these products and the reality with everything that you know is that you end up realizing it's costing you because you're running your old platform and your new platform. Those of us who have moved houses, it's like that. I've still got the old house and the new house, so we're paying for both. Or you're ending up with all of these things where you go, well, we'll get round to turning off eventually. I guarantee, I guarantee that at least five people in this, in this room have still got a couple of old laptops around just in case they need something. That's what it's like. You think you're going to migrate the whole lot, but we'll keep that stuff running just in case. Just in case we'll keep it running. That continued until this day, and I'm going to tell you the story of March the 18th, 2018. I know that day very well. I know that day very, very well. At the time, and still is, my daughter is at uh, Cardiff University. I went to Cardiff University in the morning, uh, or sorry, that, the, the day before, this, the 17th, because she was in um, a dance show. So myself and my wife went to go see her in this dance show. We went up there. We watched her in this dance show. The middle of the night, during, or just, just as the dance show started, I got a text alert to say that a disc died. A 
Okay, get those quite often. Text alert, this has died. Then I get another text alert about 10 minutes later to say it's building onto the hot soft spare. Again, normal. Two hours later, get a, a text alert to say disk is built onto the hot swap sphere, all is fine, thank you very much, nothing to worry about. We travel back, we, we, although it was in Cardiff, uh, Wales are playing France, it was the last game of the Six Nations, so we ended up staying in Cribs Causeway, nothing exciting to tell you about Cribs Causeway, never will go again. It snowed that night, completely irrelevant, but it did. He said, how you remember these things, you remember these things. On the way back, I said to my wife, look, we're passing Maidenhead, the data centre's in Maidenhead, we had a disc out, I'm just going to swap it, be 15 minutes. Stop off at the data centre, it actually takes you about 10 minutes to get through security. If you've ever been to a data centre, you'll know exactly the problem, it takes you about 10 minutes, including putting it in the earplugs because it's so noisy. Get in. We have all the spare discs there because you don't ever want to put in a cold disc into a warm environment. Throw in the disc, take out the disc that's faulty, throw in the disc, watch the lights all go live, get back in the car, drive along the M4. Driving along the M4, and I get, an e I get a call from one of my directors. Something's not right, something's not working. What do you mean? The old sites, we can't see the old sites. So I literally rush home, drop my wife and my daughter who had come back with us that day back home, rush back to the data centre. And what had basically happened is the disk array had decided to rebuild on the old, onto the brand new disk. Halfway through that disk that was brand new failed. It had been sitting in the data centre for five years unused, failed. And the hot sort of spare that it had been building from also failed. In the space of 24 hours, three discs went out of the disc array. And if you know what that means, you know, that, that's it, that's it. So we had a crisis meeting that evening of what are we going to do? Where are we? How are we? We were about 80 to 85% through our migration plans. We were, fortunately, all by one database had been moved, all by everything else was there. We worked through the night, we, went, we made a decision. Do we go forward or do we go back? And we decided we're going forward. The time has come, it needed to happen. We went forward, we pushed forward and we migrated. We delivered, we got everything over and we were finished. I would argue that if that failure had never happened, I reckon we'd still probably be running that old data centre. Because, as I said before, None of you have thrown those old laptops away. None of you have gone, oh, I don't need that anymore. i just keep another copy of it somewhere. You know, and there are so many of that, and that's what you end up with. And you end up with that thing. So we moved over, we migrated. So this, the fortunate situation is we're done. One week later, I had the best sleep of my life. Of my life. Mm -hmm. Those servers weren't emailing me all the time. <coughs> They weren't telling me about this is wrong or that is wrong or the air conditioning's got hot in this data centre that we don't even bloody own. They were, none of that was happening anymore. And the whole level of stress of owning and running your own service was gone. Now bear in mind, we deliver websites. We're not a hosting company. It's not our problem. If you're a hosting company, I'm really nice to meet you. They're your problems now. If you're a cloud provider, that's your problems now. As a supplier of websites, and this is really, really important if you're building your own websites or you're delivering solutions, the biggest thing you find is that you end up being beholden to that equipment, and that equipment is down to you, and the responsibility of delivering that site is you. In the last three weeks, we've had cloud outages of Facebook, Great. We've had Cloudflare. That went down. The one I really liked was Twitter. Because when Twitter was down, nobody had anywhere to complain. Because that was it. They couldn't go to Twitter to complain about it. But they happen. But they don't cause you stress. It's very similar to when I took the wrong decision of how to come down here today. I came down here by car. Normally, I'd come down by train. 
We both sat there, you're on the platform, the train's late. What are you gonna do? It's not your problem. When you drive and you're late, it's your problem. When you build servers and they're down, it's your problem. Going back to when you're driving, there's loads and loads of companies that think the best thing they can do is put their people on the road to drive. Those people aren't couriers, they're not transport people. They're supposed to be get from A to B, but they, they're putting that risk of that part of their job in what they're doing. Removing that and moving to cloud, for us, took that problem away and freed us up. So, what do you get the benefits? Not the one that everybody talks about, but we'll get to the real benefits of what you get from cloud. And there are a lot. Scaling and uptime. I'll show you this in a minute. The advantage of cloud is you're able to really scale when you need it. So if you've got a busy sale, you've got a busy requirement, or you've got a customer who says, well, I don't really know what I can really tell you, but something important is going to happen next week, and I really need lots of, spe lots of capacity, you can deliver it. You increase your development curve. That's a very interesting discussion. People say, what do you mean? I mean that your staff are not spending their time working out how to install Linux, or how to upgrade this package to this, or do that to that. They're spending their time doing what actually is beneficial to you, which is delivering your websites and everything to do with it. Security and disaster recovery. I, in a part of me, is saying, I'm forgetting about this problem by saying, do I care, do I worry about the backups of AWS if they do that, what do they do, what do they do, what they do? If any of you ever were going back into the days when you used to run Microsoft Exchange servers, if you ever have had that experience of running your own email server in your office, and then when that goes down going and looking at yourself going, uh, that's, a, that's a day of my life I'm never getting back. And actually, it's probably taken another 10 days off the end of my life. The advantage is you move that problem to somebody else. Obviously, the answer is, are you sure they're taking responsibility for that problem? And how do you know they're taking responsibility for that problem? And I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure we're going to come to days where people are going to say, did that actually happen and did it get delivered? And then the one that everybody talks about when they tell you when they sell you cloud is cost reduction. But it's not true. It's not true if you think you're going to run like for like on a new box and it's going to be cloud. That isn't where cloud works. It's exactly the same way they sell that, exactly the same way as when you go and buy a dishwasher and they tell you that it's eco this, that and the other if you press the eco button. And if any of you have ever done that with your dishwasher, it takes you six hours for the dishwasher to wash. It's lukewarm and it never ever finishes. They sell it to you as a reason to do it, but the reality is, if you want the job to do what it does, in other words, you want your dishwasher to work, you turn that off, and in cloud, what you actually do is you use cloud to the advantage that you can get. What do I mean by that? Your production cost should be lower, so you actually can deliver things, because you don't have to sit there and go, well, I've got this environment, and I want to spin up a test environment to see how this will work. Um, and you can do that separately. That's what you can do with cloud, which you can't do. The other thing, as I've already sort of mentioned, on my side, but very important to my staff, was the staff well-being. I have a team of guys who look after the platform. Weekends, they would have to walk around going, well, it could go down, maybe it won't, it probably won't, it's unlikely it will, but I've got to walk around with a phone just in case. And they've all got to be ready for that. And if it goes down, because it's our fault, we've got to fix it. When if it is, when you get the call and someone says, well, we can't post our live videos to Facebook, can you fix it? Do you, want, do you have a phone number for Facebook? Because I don't have one. Maybe Nick Clegg has his phone number somewhere and we can all call it. It takes these problems away and it takes that stress level away from your staff and anybody responsible. And in today's environment, that cost, although it's a soft cost, is massive. Absolutely massive. 
So, what do I mean by scaling an uptime? Um, if any of you are familiar with this, have we got any rugby fans in this room? This is the Six Nations website. Um, if you're interested that this is absolutely 100% verbatim, that is running WordPress. That website is running WordPress. That is the size of that site, and we look, you're looking at the site when there when there's some, some games on and there was some information on there. That was actually a weekend. There were three games on at that weekend, uh, which you can see here. Um, Scotland, Ireland, Italy, Wales, and on Sunday, Sunday was England, France. Scotland, Ireland, two games in a row, bit of a flat at the top. England, France, slightly higher on, on the peak on Sunday. Total additional cost to run that, £120. Just let that sink in, £120. That's how much extra it cost us in burst for that weekend. It's not what we told our clients, but that's what it was. This game, I don't know if anybody who are rugby fans, if there's any England fans here, they probably hated this day. I have to be in Cardiff at that game. This is the game where uh, Wales beat England um, in the last minute. Um, if you weren't, big, big occasion, big occasion, big game. Forty nine thousand seven hundred and sixty four unique visitors a minute. That's a minute. Right? I know there's a lot of people who say if that was my traffic for a day or even a month, that would be pretty good. That's in one minute. The other thing that's very interesting, and I think this is really interesting for all of us, is mobile at 85% and tablet at 6.9%. We're less than 8% of that traffic was on the desktop. How many of your clients are still asking you to see the design of the desktop before they ever look at the mobile and actually don't even care what the mobile looks like because they're looking on their own desktop. That's the real traffic of there. The bad news, we didn't hit 50,000. We really wish we did. It was 49,764, but it was close enough. What would have happened to that site going back to that single server or the individual cluster? We were, uh, we were running about 28 servers at that point. 28 servers we were running to deal with that. And I don't want to go into the technicalities because there's a lot of things. We use something very similar to something which is known as a jam stack. So that means that while we're using WordPress, the majority of people hit a content delivery network. If you've got questions about that, I can go through it. I know that's, there's lots and lots of words I've used there that to some people will be interesting, for others not. But it delivered. At the end of the day, going back to that question of, we have a we have a season ticket sale. Is the site up or is the site down? There was only one sign time for that site to be up, and it was up. What does it mean on the development curve? I've used another site here. This is the Welsh Rugby Union site. We used to, under our old platform and our old environment, we used to use a different content management system, and that's part of our migration as well. And this is using a tool that some of you may or may not come across called Speed Curve. So we're able to analyze what the site used to look like against what the site now looks like in terms of speed. So you actually have to take a snapshot of the time. There's no point, you can't go back. How many times, we got, we got a great email this week. Can you tell us how many people clicked on this button that we never put any traffic in on? Six months ago, it's like, I don't know. I don't know, but there you go. A lot of the things have improved. A lot of the things, this is the, the Welsh Rugby Union from their old site to their new site. And some of the things that I really like on this, as you can see, is that we've reduced, literally reduced 35% of the total size of the site, but actually um, a visually complete, that means is the site working, is coming in at 3.8 seconds instead of 8.4 seconds. Okay. How does that site, the Six Nations, compare to other sites out there? Because that's 
good question that customers always say. I, how fast am I side against other sides? Bear in mind, I'm using speed curve, which we don't have, you don't, you can put speed curve on any side, including all your competitors' side. However, like anything else, these are lies, lies, and statistics. You can decide how and which part of these you believe and how you do it. It's how it measures things. The nice thing is it's measuring them exactly the same way, but there are things that you have to look into here. Six Nations, oh, sorry, my fault. Six Nations, on this one, we chose six sites, is the second fastest. The fastest on this one, and anybody who knows these things on Google, you have to have a benchmark that's faster than you. We use the Guardian newspaper. And anybody who's done anything on SEO, will know that the Guardian newspaper is literally one of the fastest and best sites for SEO out there. Hey, Guardian newspaper delivers the site in 1.3 seconds. We deliver in 1.4. We're pretty happy that we're just slightly behind. So that's like being just, just behind, behind you, say, Bolt, but in front of the others. Some of these other sites, and you'll be familiar with them, Man City, 4.4 seconds, England Rugby there, and some club down the road from here is 6.6 .6 seconds. Okay. What's that look like in the real world? This is really interesting. If you watch this video, when the site goes grey, the site's fully loaded. This was done last night, so it's working exactly the same system on each of these sites. And I hope it will play. Great, but it doesn't do the things you want it to do, <laughs> isn't it? Let's see if I can actually make it play. Come on, Herb, will your PC play? Oh, there it is. I've got it, got it, got it, got it. <coughs> Tell me when it plays, because I can't watch from the back and. I'm not going to get this to play, am I? Unless, actually. Hold on, let me do it that way. <laughs> Tried and tested things. Last try. show it to you on my laptop later. Um, it'll show in the England Rugby website that uh, the Six Nations loading in about three seconds, um, up to Southampton about six and a half, and for some reason Wimbledon Tennis loads in about 15 seconds, 18 seconds. So you'll sit there and go, well that sounds wrong because the Wimbledon website was really fast when news. Because of the way this works, it loads, all, I think what we think is happening with Wimbledon is they're loading everything on your first visit to the site and they're loading loads and loads of stuff so that you visit other pages and you preload but your first visit is slow so okay i've talked about this indirectly you launch a website or you you make a load of changes to your website and or the customer goes and makes a load of things and they completely screw it up and you're going, oh, I've got to re repair that. The advantage when you're going over to cloud is because you're taking the ability to take snapshots, you can roll back. Any of you who are on a Mac who have ever used things like this to go back and say, oh, actually, I just want my Mac to yesterday afternoon, it's so much easier than having to restore. Yeah. And you can take exactly the same time things out. Real-time backups, the backups of all your databases can happen real-time, so you actually can just take a snapshot of the database and you can upload them and have them ready. They're massively, massive advantages of doing it. And we've talked about Simplify Fallover, Disaster Recovery. It's there in the cloud. It's part of how it's supposed to happen. I do believe 
that we don't know fully how well some of these things will work because the disasters haven't happened. Sooner or later, somebody's going to sit there and take out one of these big data centers, and we're going to see if it all does what it says it does. Cost reduction. Our year-on-year -year hosting costs, and bear in mind we run some very big sites, so our costs are quite large, have gone down. They haven't gone significantly down, they haven't halved or anything like that. We've taken a lot of a hit in reducing our costs. So there's definitely been an advantage. When you talk about this with cloud people, the one thing they will always say to you, and we have to do it because we're doing it all the time, is you have to monitor and manage your costs every single month. That may sound a big overhead. If you're only running a few sites, it's not worth it. If you're running the level that we are, what you'll find is if you don't, it will sort of drift away from you and you'll end up with the cost that you didn't have. However, the soft costs, as I've already mentioned, is we've actually reduced 74% reduction in our out of hours and weekend support. That obviously has a hard cost, but from a staffing level, the level of stress that that takes out, the level of issues, the level of burnout that you 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 do reduce has reduced because we've taken away this big area of, of stress out of the company. And I can't emphasize how much it's meant in terms of the development not support. So we're now doing things that we weren't doing in the past. Arguably, we would have got around to them anyway, but we have changed from using Apache to Nginx, we've changed to uh, using images to WebP images, we're uh, PHP 7 instead of 5, we are uh, the later, but we're on version 5, all of our sites are on version 5 of WordPress, and the list will go on and on and on. I'm not saying we couldn't have done those. That's definitely not the case. But when you don't have to worry about the back end and the underlying and the infrastructure and all that, and you can actually re release that bandwidth, it makes a big difference. And so we end up, as I've said, in the place where we have a better product, a better company, a better number of staff, and I get to sleep. If you have any questions, I'm more than willing to take questions. Thank you. Liam, you said that you want to monitor costs. Can you just elaborate how you think So, monitoring costs, uh, our head of our platform, our platform team lead, will look at you get, because we're on AWS, and to be clear, we, are, we made a decision to migrate to a single cloud provider and we probably will look at changing uh, parts of that, although we do use some bits on there, but he, we will literally get these 15, 18 page long invoices every single month and you'll sit there and analyse what all of these things are because there's lots of things that you are paying for and it's just working out. A good example of that is that in the last year, Amazon came out and said, oh, we've changed, we have a new range of servers. They're running AMD processors instead of Intel processors. They're something percent cheaper. I think it was like 20% cheaper. And all we had to do was spin down, spin up, and we just took 20% out of that cost of, of, of those servers. It's that sort of thing. I'd like to ask you a very important question. Then, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, I, I, okay, I understand servers, of course, but I don't understand how does cloud store data out? Where does it go? Okay, so um, that's a really good question of how cloud works. Yeah. What does it? My, the, the key difference is that instead of you having one device that you actually, so databases example, you put the, in the old days you would have a server, a box, and on it would have hard disks, and, then, and there your data resides. Under cloud, what they actually do is they say, the, the, the data is held in a big array of disks here, 
and then they attach devices that will actually read the data off it. So that's the actual server. And at any one time, you may be using, you, you wouldn't actually know which of those servers you're using. So you're basically, think of it this way. Think of the difference between saying that you own a car, that's your car, or that you say tomorrow, I'm getting rid of all my cars and I'm going with Uber. I don't care which car turns up as long as it takes me to work and brings me back again. It's that sort of, that sort of approach. You remove yourself away from that. More than that, I think you're going to have to talk to a hosting specialist to <laughs> have the pure differences. Is that similar to uh, Torrent? No, it's a, that's a different approach. Yeah. The other thing that cloud works on is that rather than you actually building a physical server, you write a specification of what the server is in a, and it creates that instance for you. It builds the bits together to make it. So, but a torrent and how you store data in that way in an open environment is a different, different thing. It's, it, I think, I think, I think it comes down to very similar. Another ex ex good example of where it works from your perspective or our perspective is in the good old days, we all had a rack of DVDs and now we just go, Netflix. Do we care where Netflix stores it? Do we care? Do we? I don't care. I don't care. As long as when I go to it and I can press go, I can watch that same movie or that same TV program. I don't care. And that's the difference. I don't have to sit here as I used to being responsible for this for the DVD collection for my customers. Yeah. 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 <coughs> Sorry, Go ahead. Um, when you're expecting additional load from your website for a match, yeah. how do you plan for it? Do you contact Amazon and say Okay, that's a very good question and there's two answers to that one. In theory, we don't have to do anything because what actually happens is the scripts are written so that when it sees that there's a big enough load, it just spins up another server. So we go two ways, and I'm going to try and make this. this. So we go, we, we spin up servers vertically and horizontally. How? What does that mean? So if you spin horizontally, what you do is you, sorry, if you spin vertically, you add in more of exactly the same onto the same box. If you spin horizontally, you add more boxes. So if you imagine that you're sitting there and you're building your capacity, eventually what you do is you fill up a hole in the server and then you fill up another physical server and then you fill up another physical server. So when I said the Six Nations were running about 28, that's 28 physical, that's 28 cluster, uh, containers. Probably that fills up something like three and a half physical boxes. But it's, it, you can keep going and on and on and on and on and on. <coughs> now the bit that I, that isn't, there, we were very, very fortunate. One week before this year's Six Nations, um, Six Nations announced that they had a new sponsorship partner called AWS. As part of that sponsorship partnership deal, AWS rang us up and said, oh, we want to put on power by AWS. We said, okay, fine, what does that mean? And they said, well, we did it on Formula One, it's about a six month process. And we said, well, the first game's in eight days. They went, you can hear them, they go, no, no, and they said, hold on, did you say the first game's in eight days? And we went, yes. And, ah, oh, right. We're going to put you on premium support. Now, I don't think I'm giving away any secrets on this one. So we asked them, we said, okay, great, what premium support? Two questions. Uh, what do we get for premium support? And how much does it cost out of interest? So the question to the, the answer to the first question is, we give you this phone number and email address. Right, okay, what else? No, that's all you need. So if you have any questions, you ask us. And we said, so how much does it cost? They said, it's, it's, it's quite cheap, it's 10 grand a month. And you go, so for 10 grand a month, I get a phone number and an email address. So it's good business, it's a very good business they run there. What actually happened? is we were able to ring them and say, we've got these games. And they said, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to self, we're going to warm up all these boxes ready for you. So it sort of comes back to that Uber analogy. 
they just basically lined up a row of taxis sitting outside waiting. We hadn't, you didn't have to use any of them, but the minute we got the traffic, they suddenly appeared, rather than having to wait for three, four minutes for the spin up. So that happens. Anything else? We have a couple of questions that have come in. A couple of questions come in? Yep. Um, one of them is. Are they from any of these from my staff? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, that's it. Uh, now you'll find that I told complete rubbish. And then, then that's it. Oh, God. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, how big a company do you need to be to, to move your hardware to the cloud? Um, personally, my view is that if you're building stuff now, you should be building it in cloud. That doesn't mean to say you should be building it in cloud that you, particularly as we have, we have a contractual agreement that we build everything in AWS. If you take something like, um, um, God, I can't think of company names. Uh, um, um, some of the word, WordPress hosting companies. Human made. Human may provide a cloud system, but it's not on the public side. They're, they're, but they have a they have a very good cloud system. But there's a number that you can get. Uh, WP Engine, sorry, I don't know why I'm going mad. I couldn't remember. WP Engine, everything that you deliver with WP Engine is on cloud, and it's actually on AWS. So they are doing the relationship and reselling it. Most of the people that you will deal with in terms of s selling hosting where they were selling traditional hosting, majority of those are either going to cloud or will be cloud. So the argument is, I mean, I don't want to go too far into this segue because I could be here for hours. But those who know me will know about this, but I'm a real big fan of things like electric cars and where we're going in that, that environment. The reason I mention it is that in 15 years time, we probably won't own our own cars anymore which at the moment where you're standing and you're thinking about it is quite a big leap. The exact same thing is happening. I don't need to own that thing. I don't need to care. I don't care if it has, I don't care if it has a puncture. I don't care if it doesn't do this because it will be replaced by one that does in 10 seconds. That's exactly where cloud takes you. You take away this thing. Unless you are a hosting business, unless that's your core business, it's actually not your core business and you want it to not be your core business. Your core business should be building websites or delivering websites or whatever you do or customer service. Good answer. Uh, the next question we've had is, do you host all of your websites uh, on the cloud or do you only offer that to the big customers? 100% uh, cloud now. We, have, we, we took the approach. This comes back to that conversation I said earlier about how when you've got two of anything, you've got that old laptop that you keep running. I mean, I, one of my clients used to have this old server that they had the old database stuff on. The server couldn't work properly, so they had literally desk fans around it just to keep the thing cold enough with the cases off. Until you get rid of that stuff, you're always, always, always responsible for it. And we just took the decision, that's it, enough. And that failure was the bit that pushed us over to say, we never, ever, ever want to own our own servers. Because it's just, the minute you do, you've got to employ people to do something and we didn't want to do it. Do you have to go through a hosting company to actually access the cloud? Um, you do and you don't, yes. If you ask your, what, what, I think what we've got to be careful about here is what I'm trying to say is, a lot of people used to build their own servers or take the responsibility or they would buy a a, an amount of server space from somewhere else and they're responsible. The advantage with the cloud side is it's saying, I don't care. It is exactly the same model as renting cars, as I said to you earlier. You see, all our, all our day-to-day day -day working is yeah. on OneDrive. It's all, it's all up in the cloud. So it's on OneDrive. But yeah. our website isn't. Is it with... It's, it's, with, a, with, it's a with a host. So that's where, um, and I'm paying, actually, uh, now that I've remembered WP Engine's name, I should start paying me. Um, that's where looking at things like this will take the hassle away. I was dealing with somebody I deal with on a, on a charity basis. They turn around to me and say, we've got a great hosting deal for our website, right? I said, yeah, we pay £1.50 a month. And I said, so you pay less than one cappuccino 
for the one thing that guarantees where your new track, where your new customers are coming from. You're, and you're happy that you're paying less than one cappuccino a month. What are you getting from it? And then when it's down, which it went down, why am I surprised? Mm. If you think that's part, if, that, if you think that's so little of that part of your business, and this is a big problem we all have with our, with customers, it's value of a website. You know, I got a request. Could I do this, this, and this, and this? And we all know what that really means is: could you spend about ten or twelve hours of work, and I'll give you a six quid bottle of wine? It's like, no. it's, it's until they value that. It's a proper job. It's a proper time that you spend building these things. And actually, it's the it's the one of their biggest in most people's worlds. It's the biggest way they generate revenues. Mm. So you need to look at it and say, where am I getting my work? Where am I hosting with? There's a lot of people. You don't have to go to the extremes or the at the top tier. There's a lot of cloud-based hosting companies. You just need to make sure that the issue is taken away from you having to. If you have to sit there and configure the server and be responsible for this, responsible for that, it's not your role. That's the issue. Yeah, can I just add, I'm a designer. Right. Um, I, I, I've got any crayons. I've run a, small, I've run a small number of, of sites. It's all on AWS. You just don't have to think about it. It's just easy. It's I don't think anybody would, go, and I, so I've used the, the analogy a few times, and those of my staff will go, he's going on about cars again. You don't buy a car and don't service it. It costs you £600 a year or roughly for some cars to be serviced. And then they will sit there and pay nothing for the website hosting. You know, like, guys, it costs money. This thing's absolutely cost money. So I agree. So you build, you build all your stuff on AWS? Yeah. yeah. Um, we've had another question about what does AWS stand for? I am 95% sure it's Amazon Web Services. It's one of those things where if, if somebody writes to you and asks you what PHP stands for, mm -hmm. then they can forget it because nobody can answer that question. Um, next question we've had is, um, I think it's a joke question, um, is it only men's rugby that you do websites for or do you do women's sports too? Uh, small women's sport, we played today called England Netball. We do the England Netball website, so we do a lot. Of, we do a lot of other sites. Latest European tour of golf, and other other ones we've always worked in. And world sailing throughout the world. But the examples I gave, you're right, were all on England. Uh, were on, on rugby because of the traffic levels are still bigger there. You also um, mentioned SEO, and right. um, one of the questions we've had in um, seems to be coming in rather fast actually. <laughs> Was, um, did you mean that because you moved to cloud, your SEO improved? Yes, 18% improvement, improvement in SEO on the Six Nations website without doing any SEO snake oil. Because the site was faster, because the site was delivering, and, it, and if you look at anybody that tells you, the biggest single thing that you can do to reduce or to improve SEO is to make your site faster. If you can drop three seconds off your site load, if you can drop one second on an eight second load, you will increase your SEO then over anything else that you'll do. Um, a question in about why did you choose WordPress for all of your platforms? And is that the best way to go if you're going to go and do things on the cloud? Okay, two questions. Um, why did The first bit is why did we choose WordPress? Um, we looked at a number of different content management systems and for our business and delivering why we wanted to go. In particular, the people we could get. And I think this is really important. For us, the best people that we could get in terms of coming out of university for the development, the best environment we could deliver for our customers is WordPress. We're big fans. We're really big fans of it. And there are massive, massive sites around WordPress. If people say to you, oh, but it's not scalable, or it's not this, or it's not that, it's rubbish. It's just, it can do all of the things. What was the second half of that, Abba? I don't know. 
<laughs> you don't know, I don't know. That was good. We've answered that question. <laughs> We've answered the question, yeah. I, I think the second half was if you're going to use WordPress, is the best way to do it on cloud. Um, I think the answer to that is definitely yes, because if you look at some of the things like WP Engine, which take responsibility to another level beyond the one that we've talked about. I've only talked about cloud, and we take responsibility for a lot of the actual setup of the WordPress. When you go to something like WP Engine, they go even a level higher, so they actually turn around and they give you all of that, and you just have to log in, load up your theme, add in the, the plugins, they'll tell you that those plugins they won't allow, and they'll do all of that for you, and they just take that hassle factor away. If you're doing some heavy development and heavily, heavy modification, you may find that it's too restrictive. But if you're building certain types of websites, you can, you can do it all without actually getting your hands dirty. There's a lot of similar, some of things like that. Um, I think probably the last question we're going to take tonight, and I'll probably make sure that we send you all the questions and we can put the responses yep. on our website, um, is a question from somebody who said, was WordPress how you got into doing websites? No. No. Was WordPress how we got to work? No. Um, they missed the beginning of the talk where I said the company's 18 years old. There wasn't WordPress 18 years ago. So we, I started this because I used to work for a football club. And then I ended up, they turned around to me in 1996 and said, do I know how to make money out of the internet? Which is a great question to get in 1996, 97. And I set up doing, I was selling the advertising sponsorship on the sites for a while, and then in 2002 we set up building the actual websites themselves. So that's pre WordPress, and we used some other CMSs and moved over to WordPress at the same time as we did, did it was part of this thing. We said, let's change everything. Why not? You do, don't you? Change everything. And that's what we did. Is there anything else that you would like to add based on the questions you've had tonight? No, I think it'd be really good questions, and um, it's been really interesting. And just so that you've got a, a, we have 32 questions that I haven't even met through yet. So, which is, which is good, great. Yeah. And I don't think they're all that. from your firm. No, <laughs> but if, they're, if, they're, if, if any of those are people like Vito or Nathan Riggie, if, if any of you are aware that, as with ABBA and, and Herb and others, we are involved in other word camps and other meetups and I was at a uh, word camp in Europe uh, when was it a month ago? A month ago, yeah. Um, and if any of you are thinking about doing it, please, please think about doing it. It's absolutely brilliant, wasn't it? It was. And a great time. And that is actually I would actually add, and that's a very good point. We chose WordPress because of where we wanted to go technically and we were really excited about what it could deliver. We didn't know about the community. We didn't know about this until we joined. And then we suddenly went, oh my God, we're home. And the company is at home in this. Next week, I've got three members of my staff talking at a very similar conference um, on a different area. We just love this. And this is actually, it's the, you know, every, half the people in this room, in theory, are competitors of each other. And we're all working together to solve our problems, and that is really good. And that's why I thank the people on the camera for their questions. And and just to echo that, we've had a lot of questions that come through Slack. Um, so we we put the live stream out on various Slack bits. Uh, so any of you on uh, most of you on the UK WP Slack? And if okay. you're not, we'll cover that afterwards. But if you want to. That is a great way to talk to people on UK WP Slack. If I got the right, I never get the right way around. Um, we have got a slide. We've got a slide. Oh, there you go. You see, I segue over. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, can I just give a big round of applause to Leo? <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of the evening, um, and he's. We may hang on to him for the course of the next time as well, and. After our break, we're going to do a session on live streaming. So if you've got any other questions in the meantime, please do ask Leo. Um, I noticed some of the questions that I've now got are from people in this room as well. <laughs> so that's, that's a bit... That's, that's lovely to know that people are wanting to ask questions. Um, we're going to come off camera now.